Hello everyone, FunshineX here, and this is a computer craft tutorial on a cool peripheral that I haven't been able to uh, use before, um, but I'm bringing it to you now because I want to use it in my Let's Play, and so I figure I better do a tutorial on it so, number one, I can figure out how, how it works, and number two, I can show you guys how it works so you can use it in your own worlds. Uh, the peripheral that I'm bringing you today is uh, part of Amibus' peripherals pack, and there's actually two of them. One is the RFID, uh, system and the other one is the magnetic strip system. Um, each of them comes with a, a reader and a writer so you can have an RFID card that you store in your inventory and you write some data to it and then whenever you're close to the RFID reader which is this block over here with the cool little checkerboard pattern it's going to read the data on the card and send it to the computer attached to it and then you can have all sorts of actions happen based on what's on the card. So you could think of things like uh, only turning your computer on when you're next to it, some person with the access key card or something like that, or having a door that opens only when you walk through it uh, or walk close to it. On the other side is the magnetic strip card. That one you write data to as well, uh, but that one you actually have to put into the little slot here. And uh, think of this like an ATM card. Your computer could read the data on there and, uh, and change it. Um, the difference between the two, again, RFIDs work at range, and it's a five-block range, um, but you can only write to the cards once. So you're going to write some kind of password, you're going to write some kind of data onto it, and it's never going to change. A magnetic strip, on the other hand, you can keep writing, so um, you might have some kind of uh, information on there that you update every time you swipe it or something like that. And uh, so let's first start with how to build all these new little blocks here. So the first one on the left is the um, the RFID reader, and uh, you'll see that it's pretty simple to build um, because you probably need a lot of these in your world if you use these extensively. And it's just stone, redstone, iron ingot, and a redstone torch it gives you the RFID reader. Okay, you plunk that guy down, plunk him next to a computer, and then you can access all the peripheral uh, functions. And I'll teach you those guys in a minute. Uh, to make the actual RFID card. You surround uh, paper with redstone on top and bottom, and you get the card. And note that you can take the card and uh, a couple dies. Let's actually get three cards here. And um, get out of. Hold on. That's better. Back out of creative. So you can die these, and it just changes that little strip on the bottom. And this is only cosmetic, so you can kind of tell easily which card is which. Remember these are write once. So once you've written data to them, they become locked and you can no longer edit the data on the card. If you try to, you'll get an error. And uh, yeah, so those are the RFID cards. Okay, this guy in the middle, he's a really cool block. He's all like three-dimensional. Is how you actually write data to the cards. And this is a lot more expensive, but luckily you're only ever going to need one of these really somewhere in your computer craft area to write all your cards for you. And this one's got some stone, uh, two blocks of gold, two redstone lamps, glass pane, and redstone repeater. And that gives you the RFID writer. That one also needs to be hooked to a computer so you can call the functions to tell it what to write to the card. And uh, note it takes about 30 seconds to actually write the data, um, but there is a way that you can go to config file, set an admin password, and then whoever's the admin can write cards instantly. Uh, the last thing over here on the right is the mag card reader, and again, it's pretty cheap. A bunch of stone, redstone, redstone torch. You usually make that in your first hour of a Let's Play. Uh, the magnetic cards are, again, pretty simple, but you need some iron and paper and redstone. These ones can also be dyed, so let's get three of those. And they actually change the whole card. And again, this is just cosmetics, so you can kind of easily tell which card is which. And remember that the MagStripe cards are read-writable, so you can change the data on them at any time. Okay, that's how you build the things. Let's see how you actually use them. And over here, I've got my computer. I've got uh, the uh, RFID writer, and the MagCard peripheral can read and write. So this is how I'm going to write both the cards, either in this slot or this slot. You'll see with the RFID, what I need to do is take one of these cards in my hand and just right click, and you'll see it's going to set it right in there. The purple one jumped down thanks to inventory tweaks, but uh, you'll see that it's taken it out of my inventory. It's now right there. Uh, when I go to write it, 
this little glass block is going to slide right in place and I won't be able to click, take it out. And after those 30 seconds are done, this thing will go green, the microwave will beep, just kidding, and you'll be able to take out your card just by right clicking it with your fist. Okay. So that's how that guy works. Um, this other one here, you're going to need to write code so that it's ready to write. I hate the rain. And as soon as it's ready to write, it's going to switch this green button to a yellow state. And then you just take your card, and all you have to do is right click on it, and it's instant uh, to write onto those cards. It'll go back to green, and you'll know that your data was written. Um, when it's in read state, it'll also be green, and you can just click on it. You'll get an event that a card was entered, and here's the data that was provided. And then you can write code that handles that. Um, I've got two things over here. This is a door that's got attached, um, you know, I'm within five blocks of this RFID reader. So whenever I have this RFID card, it's not programmed yet, but once we're to do it and we walk within range, it's going to open the door for us. Over here, I've got a kind of like a simulated ATM where I'll take my uh, MagStrip card, I'll come up here, I'll click it, and uh, it'll deposit a diamond in here. And I might actually add a monitor up here that tells me how many uh, diamonds I have left in my bank account or something like that. And maybe we'll do gold instead of diamonds. Sounds more realistic. But uh, anyway, so you could use that for tons of different applications. Um, obviously, I need to fix that because I can't open the chest. But let's start writing code and see how to write data to these cards. Okay, so the first one we're going to start with is the RFID writer. It's on the left of my computer. And uh, we'll learn the API as we go through a sample program that I wrote to write data to cards. Um, so the first stuff you don't really need to worry about. It's just uh, knowing whether the program is running or not because we're going to be in a loop. I have a couple um, a, a table here called state, and it's just a couple of strings based on kind of what's going on in the program. And we'll start off as current state waiting for card. A uh, helper function that converts any number just to a percent string. You'll see what that's used later. Uh, so first, we're always going to need to wrap a peripheral. We've used this in all our peripheral tutorials. Peripheral.wrap in the side is the left, and we'll store that as the writer object. Uh, now I'll do a while loop, and while is running is true, then I'll do this. I'll see first, here's our first function of the peripheral, is the isPresent method. That'll return true or false based on if there is a card in the slot. So if uh, not, the writer's present, uh, then I know there's no card in there and the current state is 1, waiting for card. Uh, I'll do an else statement, I know that uh, current state is 2, meaning the card is present. And uh, I'll do a couple more checks because it might be present but it might be doing other things. Um, here's our second function, this is the get progress method, and that will return either negative 1 if it's not currently writing anything, or it'll return between 0 and 1 as a, as a kind of like a percent. So if it's a 0, it's 0% 0 done. If it's 1, it's 100% done writing. Um, so that's current state 4, which is writing card up in my table above. And the other one I want to check is uh, writer.iscoded. And that means a card is in a lock state it's already been written to. So I know if it's is coded, then I'm done writing to it. So current state is 5. Um, if the current state is 2, meaning uh, it's not in progress and it's not already coded, it didn't get set to 4 or 5 here, then it's still at 2, then I'm ready to ask the user, um, what do you want to write onto this card? So first I'll ask him, what data do you want to put on it, read it in, then I'll, what do you want to label this card, and put it in there. And I'll set the current state to 3, which means it is writing the card. I'll sleep for two seconds just so I can go see the cool graphics that go on when you write a card, and I'll call the writer.encode method, and that takes two parameters, the data that you want to write on the card and the label. It does take a secret third parameter, and that is that admin password, that if you pass it and it matches your config file, the encoding is instant. Otherwise, this will take 30 seconds. Uh, so after I figure out what state it's in, I'm going to clear the terminal, put the mouse at the top left, and print the current state. And if the state is 4, meaning it's currently writing, I'm going to get the writer.getProgress to see how far it is along, convert it to a percent, and print that out. Sleep 2 seconds, go check the state again. That's my whole program. Go ahead and uh, rewind YouTube and review it if, if anything was a little confusing. 
Okay, so we're obviously in our first state waiting for card. We've got nothing in there. And we'll see if we put our card in there. We get that red symbol, meaning it's 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 good. Uh, this card is, we know it's a blank card because the outline here is gray. You'll see that change in a minute. And you get a nice little blinking red light. Okay, our, we're now uh, in our second state, meaning we want to know what data to write to the card. So on this one, I'm going to enter a password. So let's do my name. And then like uh, 11011. And enter a label, and we'll call this Funshine. Funshine X is key. Okay, now you see that little class block, awesome. It kind of comes down and covers our card. And you've got this little kind of red bar growing, and that's kind of showing you the percent and all these cool psychedelic lights. And here we see reading that progress and updating. So again, it takes, I don't think it takes full 30 seconds. It seems to be a little bit faster than that. And then it is done. You can't get the card while that glass block is down. We'll let you pull the card out. And now you see we've got a red uh, outline around our card. That means our card is has got data on it. We can't write it to again. You can see that card is complete, meaning the uh, is red is uh, that method that we use called is coded returned true. Okay, now all I have to do is punch it with an empty fist to get it out. And you see if we put it back in, it'll stay in his red state. If we put a new one in there, it'll go back to, it's okay to read it. Okay, so now we're gonna have to go over here and bring it close to this little thing. And I haven't coded this guy yet, so he's not doing anything. But uh, if this were coded, all I would have to do is come within five blocks of this guy, and he would be able to read my card, and then I could act appropriately. Okay, before we do that, let's learn how to write onto MagStrip cards. Okay, for the MagStrip card writer, uh, this is the function I've got. Again, just to boolean to know if the program is running in a loop or not. I'm going to wrap the right side this time and call it reader. Uh, even though the mag writer is a writer and a reader, I'll just call it reader for now. I've got a very simple print menu function, uh, not as anywhere complex as the cool menu tutorial I did. Go check that out, uh, but this is just for tutorial purposes. And I'll, I'll do a loop and clear the terminal, top left mouse, and print out my menu and read in the user's choice. Uh, clear the position, uh, clear the terminal again. If they chose one, that means they want to write a new card. So I'll ask them for the, to enter their name and I'll read it in and uh, then print out a now write it, uh, writing message. And here's how you write to a uh, mag strip card. You just call reader.beginwrite. And remember, you can't just call write because there's no card actually in the peripheral. It's in the user's inventory. So we just call begin write. And what that will do is that will turn this little yellow light on. And that's how you know that the mag strip reader writer is uh, ready to write the card. Uh, it's going to do a begin write, and then when it's done, um, pretty much instantly, it's going to throw an event called mag write done. And so I'm just going to pull that from the uh, operating system. When I when that triggers, then I know that it's, it's done. If the user chose input two, that means they want to read the card in my menu. And so I say, okay, I'm waiting for a card. And when you do that one, um, when the person, it'll be yellow. Uh, it'll actually be off because it's waiting to read. And when you right click on it and the yellow light's off, it will do a read event called mag underscore swipe. And that stores the uh, data that was in the card in the second parameter of os.pull event. The first one is actually just the name of the event, mag swipe, and the third one is null in this case. And so I'll print out the card data. And then I'm just reading an empty string so they can have time to see it. If they choose any other option, then I'm going to quit the program and sleep. Okay, so let's start with uh, writing of our data. So I'm going to hit one. It says, please enter your name. And it's now writing. And you'll see that yellow light went on. And it's just waiting for me to right click my card. And as soon as I do that, the yellow light goes off. And this comes back. Basically, it's done. 
I was waiting for that mag uh, write event. Okay, so let's try the other one to read the data. It says now it's waiting for a card, and you see the yellow light is off. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on there, and it'll say card data is Funchine X, so it read back in my name. And we just get enter, we'll go back to our menu. So we can write pretty much anything we want on here. Why did my yellow light go on? Uh oh, I think I broke my function. <laughs> Let me try to fix it. Okay, I'm really not sure what uh, happened. The yellow light was not coming on, but I'll try it again here. And it gets it back. So that's how you write to a card and read from the card. Uh, so the only other thing we need to learn how to do is to read from the uh, RFID reader. So let's do that now. Okay, to see how this guy works, uh, I've got a little program here. It wraps the top as a reader, and uh, it's going to run an infinite loop. First, it's going to sleep for five seconds, and I'll show you why that does that in a second. Uh, it's going to clear the terminal top left again, and it's going to scan. This scan happens for one second, so if you want it to always be scanning, you're going to need to call reader.scan in a loop. It's not like you can just turn the scanner on and it'll always loop. It just reads for a second turns off. So that's why I've got an infinite loop. It's going to read, turn off, read, turn off. And you can uh, get progress. If it's not scanning, it will be a negative 1. If it is scanning, it'll be between 0 and 1. I'm not using anything for that right now. And then uh, while I'm scanning, I'm going to run another infinite loop. And I'm going to pull an event uh, because the scanner works on events. And the first event it'll do is an RFID detected. And that's for every single card that it reads in that one second period, it will uh, output the, uh, that it, it'll call that event. So when I detect that event happens, I print saying an RFID card was detected, and here's the data on the card. The second event that it'll call is when it's done scanning, which is RFID scan done. And that means basically we need to go scan again. Um, and so I break out of this first infinite loop and that will take me back up to the top. And why now I have the sleep function is here is if I um, scan and then um, try and explain it. Okay, I made a ninja edit to the program. Um, it's going to set this detected value, uh, variable to false initially. And so I'm only going to sleep if it finds someone. Because basically if I read and I find a card there, I don't need to keep reading. I can wait until you know the user has a chance to move on. I don't want to keep reading that it's there. Um, if you wanted to determine if someone is still there and still there and still there, then you could just constantly read. Um, but I also am using this because I, I print out a debug message to the screen what the data read was. So um, I need some time for you guys to see it. So that's why it's sleeping for five seconds. At the beginning of this loop, I said detect its faults. If we get that RFI detected, I set it to true. So let's give it a shot. Uh, I think this one's called an RFID reader. And you see, and after a little second there, it's going to flip too quickly. Let me fix that. OK, I just had to move detected equal faults out of the loop. That should fix that error. Okay, so we got two cards. Yeah, because I wrote a second one. I've got one for Damn Sky and one for Punchine X. So it detected the card. When it does detect, it waits five seconds. And try to detect again and see if it found it. Okay, so let's come back over here and maybe drop off one of these cards. And now when we come, it should only find the one. Cool. And if I don't have anything in my inventory, the message just should stay blank. Okay, so basically all we now we need to do, or all we need to do now, is wire up our door so that whenever it detects Funshine X, it lets me in. If it detects Damn Sky, it will not let me in, even if Funshine X is there, as well. Because you know sometimes when you're walking in your door and someone's hiding behind the corner and you open it and they run around and sneak in, well, I can make it so. If Funshine X is there, it'll let me in only if Damn Sky is not there as well. 
Okay, so let's figure out how to do that, and then we'll show you the ATM code as well. Be right back. Okay, so let's check out the uh, the door code. Um, if you'll notice this door, if I walk here, it does not open. I've got Funshine's key and Damned, side's, uh, Damned Sky's key in my inventory. Nothing happens. If I go over here and throw that key on the ground and approach, hey, it lets me through. I didn't have to click anything. I don't even have to have this in my uh, hotbar. It'll just let me through. But as soon as I have Damn Sky's key, he can't get in. If we throw both the keys on the ground, we can't get in as well. So let's look at how you set that up on the computer. Okay, so I've got a few other things. I've got these variables called FunshineX and DamSky. They're both set to false. You could call this whatever you want. This is basically just what keys it detected. You could call it key one, key two. I don't know. Um, this is from before. Uh, if it was detected, then remember I slept for five seconds because I didn't want to keep checking if once I found somebody. Uh, but now I've added another check and said, okay, if you found FunshineX and you didn't find DamSky, then go ahead and open the door. Wait three seconds so the door stays open a little while, and then go ahead and close the door. Uh, and then reset these variables, and then go, and then we'll go ahead and scan again to see if they're still present. If you go down a little bit further here, remember this is where we got the card data, and I check if the message is equal to bunch of X one one zero one. Remember that was our password, and uh, then I set that value to true. Damn Sky's password is just really simple, and I set that one to true. And really, that's all I had to do to make the door work. Um, I think it's really cool. Uh, I, I could see a server admin um, maybe not letting anyone build one of these RFID writers and maybe having one in like an admin-only area. And then when a new person joins your server, you whitelist them, and then you also give them their own RFID card that has a secret password on it that nobody knows. Um, because there was nothing stopping Damn Sky from making his own key card that if he knew my password... Uh, and then he could get in all my secret doors. So be careful if you're on a server. You don't let anyone know your password. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw... Actually, I actually want to show you one more thing. Okay, I did something tricky. Um, I don't have any keys on me. You can check my inventory. Nothing. Oh, we're out of time. Better go quick. Uh, I don't have anything on me at all, but the door is opening and closing. Well, why is that? Damn Sky's keys way over here. Where's Funshine X's key? It's in a cart. <laughs> this thing can actually detect cards inside a chest cart, which is really cool. Um, I haven't tested this with Steve Carts or uh, Railcraft, so I'm not sure if any of those advanced carts that have inventories um, it can detect in there. But I know the basic vanilla chest cart does work. Um, so you could have a cart system where they could come along and uh, with an RFID. And uh, one of these scanners would scan it and go, oh, you're the one that contains cobble. Go this way. <laughs> and it dumps cobble or something in your, into a chest. So I thought that was really cool. A little add-on. All right, let's move on to the ATM. Okay, so we've got the ATM running. It's got a nice new monitor here displaying that it's an ATM. And uh, we'll go ahead and go up, take our little mag card. We stick it in the reader. And it's going to say, thanks, Funshine X. You have six diamonds left. And then go back to you. And you'll see it gave me a diamond. Now I've got five. There's my new diamond. Four. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use them all. Come on. Let's suck this account dry. Sorry, Funshine X, you don't have any diamonds remaining. Okay, so let's see how it worked. A uh, little debug message there. Okay, so I'm going to wrap the mag reader to the bottom of my computer. How this is set up is I've got a computer here, a mag reader on the bottom, a monitor on the back, and a redstone output on the front. So wrap the mag reader at the bottom, the monitor to the back. I've got a table inside of table. You guys should be used to these for my tutorials. 
This is the members table. Each row has a player name, their password, and the number of credits, their diamonds they have. And this is initialization. Obviously, you're going to want to have this in a file because every time you reboot this program or the computer, they would be back up to that balance. So it needs to be in file system uh, to store where their data or how many diamonds they have. I'll show you how to do that in a future tutorial. Um, this is just the thank you message. It just prints out a bunch of crap that thanking them that they still have diamonds left. And this is the one that says, sorry, you're out. And I didn't format it enough, but that's not for this tutorial. Uh, we clear the monitor, make it big text, write ATM. Try and pull the event called mag swipe. We're just going to wait there until someone swipes a card. And I'm going to this was just my debug message. It printed out their passwords. So I probably don't want that in there. And set the state to 2. Um, so once we get a password, we're going to compare in a loop. So from the first member to the last member, um, find out if the password of the current member is equal to the message that came from the mag card. Uh, if it is, then let's get their current balance. If their balance is greater or equal to one, sorry, then I'll go ahead and subtract one from their balance. Uh, set the output of the front to true, so that's triggering this uh, red, uh, red wire, or alley wire, to a filter that's going to pull out a diamond from this chest. Pause for 0.4 seconds, this is just doing a pulse, and uh, print the thank you message. If they don't have a balance, we'll print the sorry message. And that is it. Sleep three seconds, go back to the uh, ATM state. And I know this uh, code is very hackable. I mean, anyone that knew your password could go ahead and uh, use your mag swipe to get the uh, mag thing to get diamonds. Um, so, you know, obviously you could write this out to a file system, uh, the current balances, so that never got lost. You could also have encryption on their passwords uh, because right now you can see I know my <laughs> the card and if I was like streaming live and went over that then everybody would see my password. Um, so you could take their the player's name and their password and encrypt it and do some funky thing like that and make them enter a pin number or something like that. So lots of things you could do with the ATM. I just wanted to show you a cool use of the mag strip writer. And with that, guys, this is going to be the end of Funshine X's uh, tutorial on how to use the um, RFID reader and writer and the mag, step, mag strip writer and reader uh, by Imibus. I think I got it right this time. So go check out his uh, forum post, download his mod, give him credit and kudos. Uh, this is a really cool mod. I'm going to put it in my Let's Play for sure. And uh, that'll be it for this time. Um, post your questions in the comments if they're easy or simple. <laughs> that sounds bad, but if you have something that's detailed, like, you know, you have a page of code and it's not working, go ahead and go to Mimus' forum post and say, I wrote this, your mod's not processing right, what did I do wrong? And I'm sure he'll help you out, or I'll browse there and I'll probably try and help you out as well. Um, not too complicated of a mod. There's only like four or five functions for each peripheral. Most of it is in, in writing the code, the handles, the events, and... Uh, so I think it's really cool. It's been Funshine X, another tutorial. See you guys later. Bye.